bless your holy and righteous name, oh God. For you are sovereign, God. For you are the King of kings, oh God. And you're the Lord of lords, oh God. And your mercy, Lord, endure forever, oh God. And there is nothing, God, too difficult for you, oh Lord. That you are our Savior. That you are our Redeemer. Redeemer. That you are all of our righteousness, God. And we stand complete in you, oh God. It is you and you alone, oh God, who is worthy. You who is servant, sovereign, God. You is who is righteous, God. You who is able, God, to keep us from falling, God. It's you, God, who washes us, oh God. It's you who gives us a clean heart, God. It's you who goes into the secret chambers of our heart, God, and understands the hidden things, Lord, that we can't give utterance to, oh God. But thank you for the Holy Spirit who gives utterance and groanings and groanings for us, Father God, who confesses the things, the very things that we're too shameful to confess, Father, before you, God. And you cleanse us, God. And you heal us, God. And you set us free, God. You deliver us, Lord. You restore us, God. You're so righteous, God, that if we go astray, Father God, you put the other 99 in the people, Father, and you come and you get us, oh God. We thank you, God, because you chase in whom you love, oh Lord. That you don't just leave us out there, God, but you come and get us because your son died on the cross for us. He made the sacrifice for us, Lord. He redeemed us. He washed us in the precious shed blood, oh Lord, and cleansed us, Lord. You are all of our righteous, oh, righteousness, God. And we stand complete in you, Father God. We praise your holy and righteous name, oh God. We glorify you, God, because you are God. That you, Lord, magnificent, mighty God, holy, righteous God, who makes us worthy, not because we've done anything, but because we are now become the adopted of the beloved, oh Lord. Because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, oh Lord. Because he sacrificed on the cross for us. Because his precious shed blood covers us and has redeemed us back to you. And now we can proclaim that we are the children of the Most High God. Lord, so we thank you, Lord, for this fresh cleansing, God. We thank you, God, that we can come to the altar and lay it all down, oh God. That we can come laying ourselves, Father, at your feet, oh God. That there is no cherubim, no seraphim that can keep us from coming to the throne of grace, oh Lord. We come with our open heart, oh God. We come, Lord God. Search down the chambers of our heart, God. If there is anything, God, that we're not confessing, anything that we're not bringing to you, Father God, Lord, let us bring it before you, God, that we can be washed, God, that we can turn and we can go back to our seats refreshed, renewed, restored, healed, redeemed, delivered, and set free, oh God. Break every chain, God, every chain, every chain, every chain, every chain, God. Break every chain. Every chain, every chain, every chain, God. Break every chain, God. Every chain, every chain, every chain, God. Break every chain, God. Every chain, every chain, God. For thine is the kingdom and the glory, God, and the power forever, oh God. Forever and ever and ever, oh God. In Jesus' name, oh Lord.
you there is no other God. We come praising you, worshiping you, adoring you, loving you, oh God. For not only the things that you've done in our lives, oh God, the things that you are doing and the things that you're going to do, we bless your name, oh God. Father God, I come lifting up the pastors of this house, pastors Clarence and Jayola Walker, Thank you, Lord God, because if it were not for them, I don't know where I'd be today. Thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness. Thank you, Father, that you called them to this work. You called them to call Fresh Anointing Christian Center into existence, Lord God. And because of the work that they're doing, Lord God, all of us are blessed. Blessed beyond measure. So I ask you, Father, to continue to bless them, Lord, with health. Bless them with strength, oh God. Father God, I ask you to give them peace of mind. When they're weary, Lord God, and when they're tired, Heavenly Father, restore them, Lord God, and rejuvenate them, Lord. And in the inner man, Lord God, encourage their hearts and let them know, oh God, that you see what they do and that you understand, Heavenly Father, when they're tired, when they're weary, and the things that they do in secret, Lord God, you will indeed reward them openly. And I pray, Father God, for the leadership of Fresh Anointing Christian Center, for all of the elders, the branch coordinators, Lord God, the leaders of all of the ministries and all of the ministries, Heavenly Father, that as they continue to do the work of the ministry, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them and their families, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray this morning for those among us who are sick and shut in. And Father God, you already know before I call each name what they stand in need of. But I ask you, Father God, to touch them, to heal them, Lord, because your word says that healing is the children's bread. And so we pray this morning, Lord God, for continued healing for Pastor C, for Minister Alfreda Reed, Sister Tammy, for Brother Joe Walker, for Deacon Fred Gray, for Minister Joyce Burton and her sister Lolita, for Minister Denise Ferguson, for her mother and her sister, for Sister Lynn Anderson, for total healing in her eyes, Lord God, for Deaconess Ronnell Smith's uncle, Mr. Paul Smallwood, 
for Minister Jane Pavlos' brother Rick, for Sister Michelle Addison, for Elder Donovan Gray's cousin Sharifa Kali, for Brother Jerry Young's brother-in-law Billy Beatty, for continued healing for Rowan Curry, for Nicole McNeil for complete healing from her surgery, for Sister Lynn Anderson's mother, for Sister Wanda Daru for healing in her back, for Sister Vi Curry, Sister Ilar Adens, Minister Denor Dolores Bacon, and for Deaconess Doris Carter. Thank you, Father God, for touching their bodies from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God, and for healing them and setting them free in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray this morning for our children and our youth. Each day we turn on the news and another young man or another young woman, Lord God, has been shot, stabbed, mugged. This is not your will, Lord God. And so I pray, Father God, that you would surround our children with angels. That as they go forth day to day, Lord God, to school, to work, wherever it is they go, Lord God, that the angels of the Lord would encamp round about them and deliver them from all hurt, harm, and danger. I pray for our youth in general, Lord God, that you would somehow, Father God, help them to understand that differences can be solved and settled without the use of guns, knives, or violence, Heavenly Father. Help them to learn how to problem solve, Lord God. And even more than that, Father God, I pray for their families. I pray for their mothers. I pray for their salvation, Lord God, because the answer is Jesus. And Father God, if they have you, then they'll have peace. And so I pray for their salvation in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for our leaders in government. I pray for our president, Lord God, for his salvation, Lord. I pray for a Damascus Road experience, Lord God, where he would be able to look up and say, I've come to the end of me. What must I do to be saved? I pray for the members of, the, of his cabinet, Lord God, for our representatives in Congress, Heavenly Father, especially those who say that they belong to you, Lord God, and that they are Christians, Heavenly Father, that they also would know what it means to truly say I'm a believer and I'm a Christian that they would take a stand for what is right Lord God that they would not give in to pressures that are placed upon them by other members that are surrounding them and I ask you Father God for peace in this country for an end to the division and the hatred Lord God that you would help us to learn to live together and to dwell together in unity I pray, Father God, for the, Father God, for all of those in the world that are lost, that when they hear the message of the gospel, Lord God, that they would not miss their time of visitation, but that they would listen, Lord God, and ask you to save their souls. I pray for all of us, Lord God, that we would be lighthouses for the lost, that as we go forth from day to day, Lord God, that they would see Jesus in us, that we, Lord God, would be the salt and the light that you've caused us to be on this earth. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are victims of natural disasters, that they would not lose heart, Lord God, that they would not be angry at you, Heavenly Father, but they instead, Lord God, would be revived, that there would be um, a resurgence in this country, Lord God, a revival, that everyone would look to you and say, Father, we need you. We need you more than anything else in this world. And that all of these natural disasters would cause everyone to understand that it's Jesus that we need. He's the healing bomb in Gilead that we need in this nation and in this world. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for hearing our prayers. And Father God, I pray for those who need jobs, those who've lost loved ones, Heavenly Father, those who need healing for their finances. And last, Lord God, I pray for all of the caregivers who from day to day are weary, Heavenly Father, but you alone, Lord God, can strengthen them and give them what they need to continue to do the work that you've called them to do in caring for their loved ones. I pray for the rest of the service, Lord God, that all that is done today would bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name. strength of
Amen and amen. All right. Let's get into the word today. I want you to turn to Romans. Romans, and I'm only going to read a few verses out of this chapter. I can't read the whole verse in the interest of time. We have communion today. But it's a very familiar passage of scripture. And I want to take my message from this text. And I'm talking about Romans 8 verses 35 through 37. Romans 8 verses 35 through 37. And I'm going to read out of two versions. The first one being the, the King James Version. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh Uh-huh, let me read it out of another version. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Y'all didn't catch that. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen? In fact, why don't you tell your neighbor, you more than a conqueror if you're saved. Oh, y'all didn't say that good enough for me. (laughs) Try it again. Say it with some gusto. Say it with... Say it with some passion, for God's sake. Some of y'all didn't drink your coffee this morning. Say it like you're a child of God and you believe it. Hallelujah. I want to talk about that. I want, yeah, somebody got it. Somebody got it. I got it. If you didn't get it, I got it. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. That's what the Bible says. And I want to talk about that. Because we are indeed more than a conqueror. And there's a lot in those three verses. A lot there. First of all, Paul says, who? Oh, my God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It's a question. But the question reveals a conviction. And the conviction Paul had was, when it comes to the love of Christ, I'm inseparable. When I got married to my wife, one of my most favorite songs was a song by Natalie Cole. And it was called Inseparable. I got news for you. It's not only Natalie Cole inseparable from her husband, but guess what? We are inseparable from our Christ. Oh, y'all don't believe that. We are inseparable. And that word inseparable means that there's no room. There's nothing that can come between my soul and my Savior. And Jesus said on my part, I want you to know I'm with you always. He says in Matthew 28 and 20, 
I am with you always. And just in case you forgot what always mean, always means always. It means forever. That means there's a never a time that I will separate myself from you. I will always. You may try to get away from me. But I'm committed to you to the end. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. Hallelujah. And the problem with us not believing that we are inseparable from the love of Christ, it produces saints that are insecure in their salvation. They're never quite sure if they're saved. Every altar call, they're coming to get saved. Listen, if you're saved, how many of you saved? I got news for you. Jesus did a good job on you the first time. He doesn't do do-overs. Oh, y'all don't hear me. If you're saved, you're saved. Can't be improved on. You're saved. But when we don't know that we are inseparable from his love, we are insecure in our salvation. Not only that, we develop a salvation based on merit. Based on works. We're always trying to do something to be accepted with God. Let me help you out. You can't do a thing to be accepted with God other than come to him and admit you're a sinner. That's it. Hallelujah. But when you are not sure that you're saved, Hallelujah. You have a salvation based on works. And your whole Christian experience becomes a struggle. We had a sister at our church, my old church, and every altar call, she was up there. Oh, you must know her. Ever off the car. It got to the place where she frustrated the pastor. Because every off the car, she was coming up for prayer. She was coming up to get saved. I think one time he said to her, don't come up here no more. Don't come up here no more. Hallelujah. How many of you are secure in your salvation? How many of you know that God is not an Indian giver? He don't give you something and then take it back. Y'all don't hear me in here. I'm inseparable. Christ says, I'm with you forever, always. Hallelujah. And there's nothing you and I did to get this salvation. Titus 3, 5 says, he saved us. Get this, not because of our righteous things that we have done, but because of his mercy, he washed away our sins, giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he starts out, in my mind, with a conviction, a conviction. And the conviction has with it a consideration. He says we are considered as sheep to the slaughter. We face death every day, but we're not bothered by it because we know who controls our future. We may not know who what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So there are certain confrontations that we have to deal with. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And there are things that come in this life that try to separate us from the love of Christ. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Seven different things that come to try to separate us from Christ. Tribulation, that's ongoing pressure from living in this world. Jesus said in this world you will have tribulation. Hallelujah. It comes naturally. You don't have to volunteer for it. It's going to show up at your door. Distress, that's episodal calamity, anguish, persecution. That's ill trip treatment because you've been doing the right thing. Because you've been doing the right thing. It doesn't mean that you talk about somebody and they haul off and hit you and you call that persecution. You weren't doing the right thing. Y'all don't hear me in here. Famine. How many of you have been through famine? In fact, let me go through all these and check the record. How many of you have been through tribulation, but you still saved? How many of you have been through distress, but you still saved? How many of you have been through persecution, but you still saved? How many have been through famine, but you still saved? How many of you have been through nakedness? And for some black people, that means you ain't have the suit that you wanted. <laughs> All y'all had need to be up. How many of you <laughs> been through nakedness, but you're still saved? How many of you been through, how many of you been through famine? Oh, lift your hands high. And you're still saved? I never forget my grandmother. There were days when we didn't have food in the house. You know what my grandmother did? She sang. She sang. We go to the refrigerator, nothing there. And mama would break out in a song. The Lord will make a way somehow. <laughs> Down at the cross I bow. Said to my soul, don't worry. <laughs> the Lord will make a way somehow. And I'm saying, ah, we ain't got no food. <laughs> And she's singing. Somebody would knock on the door. Oh. And say, Sister Campbell, I went to the store and bought these extra steaks. I don't know why I bought them. But can you use some extra steaks? Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. When you know Jehovah Jireh, when you know the Lord that is a provider, you can sing when you don't have any food on your table because you know he's going to come by and make a way for you anyhow. Hallelujah. Been through danger. How many of you been through danger? Some of y'all been through danger and you don't even know you were in danger. Because your angel was on duty that day. 
the angel of the Lord encamp around them that fear him. That car that should have hit you, that came up on the sidewalk, that missed you. That was your angel on duty. That was God's mercy. That was God's grace. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Maybe y'all ain't getting them, but I'm, I'm being blessed right now. Hallelujah. If you knew all the time. Not only, this, not only that, but the grace extends to your children. Oh, help me, Lord. Some of your children are acting like they lost their mind, but because they're the child of the righteous, God protects them anyhow. That bullet that should have hit them didn't hit them because of the mercy and grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you don't believe that you are inseparable from the love of Christ, you make Jesus a liar. Hallelujah. Christ's love is the super glue. Oh, God. It's the spiritual epoxy between us and him. It's not Elmer's glue. It's super glue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of that, we can face the cost. We can face death every day, and we do. In this society in particular, we are in a scenario where we have a, a president that might try to get us in World War III. I ain't worried about World War III because if I got to go, I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. And to be absent in this body is to be present with my Lord. You just send me where I want to go anyhow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he talks. He talks here. He gives us a question which reveals a conviction. And then he gives us seven confrontations that challenge us. Then he gives us the cost. We face death every day. Then there's the consideration. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. Ain't no big deal if we die. That's a graduation. Hallelujah. That's a promotion. And then the conclusion to all that is, it says, nay, in all these things, sometimes no is good. In this case, no is good because it's no to all the things that come into our life to try to separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. It comes from a Greek word that means contrawise, notwithstanding. It's used to express refusal, denial. Hallelujah. We can deny that those things are going to destroy us because we know who we serve. And because of that, it makes us conquerors. We become more than conquerors. Now, being a conqueror, if you play a basketball game and you win it 140 to 139, you, you conquer it. You, you got the victory. But if you play a basketball game and you win 140 to 6, <laughs> you, 
you didn't just win the game. You're more than a conqueror. I got news. The devil only got six. You got 140. You got 540. You have completely won the game. Hallelujah. And the best way to de demonstrate more than a conqueror is Joshua. Joshua was more than a conqueror. And here's why he was more than a conqueror. He not only defeated the warriors, he destroyed the walls. <laughs> they didn't get that. I know you did. <laughs> when you are in spiritual warfare, you have to deal with both warriors and walls. If you defeat the walls, and you don't defeat the warriors, they will continue to fight you and rebuild. Hallelujah. Uh, if you just defeat the warriors, what you will do is you leave a habitation for the enemy to occupy. So to be, hallelujah, more than a conqueror means that you destroy both the walls and the warrior. Tell somebody that. So you need to destroy the walls And the warriors. Yeah. Joshua defeated the warriors. And he destroyed the walls. He overcame the strong men. And he overpowered the stronghold. He vanquished the soldiers. And demolished the barriers. He routed the combatants. And he ruined the fortress. Y'all don't hear me in here. You are more than a devil conqueror. You are a stronghold destroyer. You not only deal with the beings, you deal with the buildings. Hallelujah. Everything going to go. Everything going to be destroyed. Everything going to be defeated. Hallelujah. 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 And finally, I just want to say, we do it through the conduit. We have a conduit. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. The conduit is not your pastor. It's not the deacon boy. Because sometimes the deacons don't deacon. It's not the ushers, because sometimes the ushers don't ush. Your conduit is Christ. Hallelujah. Christ alone. Christ exclusively. Christ solo. He is bad all by himself. There is only one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Everything comes through him. In him is victory. In him is triumph. In him, I'm more than a conqueror. So devil, get out of my way. You dealing with more than a conqueror. You dealing with somebody who's going to kick your tail all over this earth. More than a conqueror. Through him who loved us. 
How many of you know he loves you? You believe that? Testify to somebody and tell them he loves me. Glory to God. He loves me. You, 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 didn't, you, you don't hear what you're saying. It's okay for him to, to love my sister or my brother. It's good when you know he loves me. He takes time to talk to me. He takes time to, to commune with me. He takes time to fix me. He takes time to love me. He takes time to sing to me. Me. Me, 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 me. Ordinary me, common me. He takes time for me. So I hear, I'm here this morning to remind you of what you are. Because some of y'all been having an attack of shame. Oh, I feel you. Attack of guilt. Get courage this morning. Look the devil in his eye. And tell him you can mess with me. I'm a child of God. I'm a king's kid. I'm victorious. And I'm more than a conqueror. Get out of my house. Get out of my life. Get off of my job. Get out of my church because I'm more than a conqueror. There's nothing but victory here. There's nothing but triumph here. Get out of here. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Say, devil, get out of here. I'm more than a conqueror. Let all the conquerors stand up right now and give God a conquering prayer. Before the walls fell, there had to be a shout of victory. Before the walls fell, there had to be a shout of victory. Can we give God a shout of victory? Yeah! A shout of victory. Hallelujah. Wave your hand in victory. You have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody feel victory right now. Somebody feel victory right now. The devil lost another battle right now. He will not use shame against you again. He will not use guilt against you again. Because you have just had a revelation. And the scales have fallen off of your eyes. Fear has departed. And all you feel right now is victory. His strength. His authority. And his power. Hallelujah. Every head bow. You can be more than a conqueror too. The trick is. It's through the conduit. It's through Christ. It's only through Christ. It's not through anything else. If you receive him today, if you're not saved, you can be more than a conqueror. Those seven things, those seven confrontations, they come to everybody. The difference is Christians are more 
than a conqueror through Christ. Through Christ. Hallelujah. We win the war. We win. We win. And you can be a winner. You don't have to be a victim. You can be a victor. So as every head bowed and every eye closed, every saint praying. If you're here this morning, hallelujah. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ in the pardoning of your sins, whether you know it or not, you're a loser. Because what profit is a man or a woman if they gain the whole world and lose their soul? You are a loser already. But you can become a winner. So if you're here and you've never received Christ, I'm talking to folk who've never received him, you can make your peace with God and become more than a conqueror today. Hallelujah. So as every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not going to make this long or complicated. If you're here and you know that you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not, you're not a saint, you're not a born again Christian. All I'm going to ask you to do, if you're here, is to raise your hand and I'll see it and I'll be glad to pray for you. Hallelujah. And you're going to become more than a conqueror. All right. There's some of you already saved. You've been struggling with shame, struggling with guilt. 